Now that we have a project created on the project desktop, we can enter into the well design that we've created and start setting up some of the primary inputs. And we do that by just double clicking on the icon. This screen pulls up what we refer to as the summary grid. And the summary grid is intended to summarize the key loads in each whole section and identify whether or not those loads are exceeding some predetermined limit that we've specified somewhere in the inputs. And the limit might consist of a limitation that the rig has, whether it be the hydraulics capacity of the pumps or the hoisting capacity of the drawworks or derrick, or it might have something to do with the tensile capacity of the drill pipe or even the limitations of the rocks that we're drilling through. And so we'll go through how to set up the, Im the inputs for some of those limitations in a minute. But first I want to draw your attention to the summary grid and some of the information that it displays. So you'll notice that each whole section is categorized starting with the top whole sections first, moving deeper into the well bore. And as we click on the summary grid or even hover our mouse over the summary grid, it will highlight which interval of the well sketch that we're interested in. Now, because we had decided when we set up this well to use the default well bore, we already have some pre-existing hole sizes and casing sizes, which is why we're seeing a well sketch on the left. If we had chosen the option of having a blank well bore, we wouldn't see any drawing here on the left side of the page. We would need to enter in that information over on this tab on the left called well bore. But because I've used the default well bore, I've got some default hole sizes and casing sizes which are the common types that we often see in these sorts of wells. We then break down each whole section into two different operations or ops. We can drill the hole, 17 and a half inch hole, run number one, as you see here, or we could install the 13 and 3 eighths casing. Now both of those operations can be divided up into two different sub operations. And later on in the future, we'll have more than just these two sub operations. But for the time being, we could either drill 17 and a half inch hole, or we could trip in our 17 and a half inch hole. Now both drilling and tripping have different load scenarios that are simulated. For example, slacking off when I'm drilling doesn't really mean can I slack off and trip the drill string into the hole. This is a simulation of whether or not I can drill with a predetermined amount of weight on bit without buckling the drill string. And we'll see the inputs that go into that calculation a little bit later on. The slash mark on each one of these boxes indicates the difference between a medium load case on the left or the worst case load case on the right. Because we do sensitivity analysis on all of our loads, we're always going to have a, a picture in the summary grid of our expected case or our worst case. And the way the color coding works in the summary grid is if our expected case, this number on the left, exceeds some sort of limitation. For this example, it would be if I'm exceeding the helical buckling limit of the drill pipe, then this box will be shaded red, indicating that even my expected case is going to exceed the limitations. If the expected case is within the limitations of the system, but the worst case scenario, the number on the right, exceeds those limitations, then the box would be shaded yellow, like we see here in the 9 and 5 eighths tripping slack off case. If neither of the expected case or worst case loads exceed some limitation, then the box will be shaded green, as you can see in several of these different boxes. You'll also notice that some of the boxes don't have any color coding, and it's just left with the text, no limit, meaning that no limit has been defined yet, so the system can't determine whether or not we're over the limit. That pertains in particular to ECD loading. If I haven't defined the fracture gradient of the rock deeper than the setting depth of the 13 and 3 eighths, then it's not possible for the system to predict what the, the, whether or not the ECD is going to exceed that limit. Likewise, with the pump pressure, if I haven't defined what liners I have in my pumps or even the types of the pumps that I'm using, then the system doesn't know if that pressure is acceptable or not. This, is again, is what we call our home screen or summary grid gives you a lot of information in just a quick snapshot. And we also get a nice picture of the well sketch here in the lower left-hand corner.